I am so glad to be talking to my next guest. He is a prospect who you will be see competing at the Pan American Games June 21st to June 24th in Mexico. It is Gabe Rednose joining me here on the program for the very first time. Gabe, how are you? Good. Thank you for having me. Blessed to be here, man. Hey, uh, pleasure's all mine. It's uh, always uh, fun getting to talk with up-and-comers like yourself. Uh, before we talk about uh, your backstory and how you got into MMA, how cool is it to be a part of this uh, Pan Am uh, games that, that are coming up here? And Forrest Griffin, of all people, selecting the teams. Um, it's, it's a blessing, man. It's a, It was a blessing in disguise. I actually um, had a fight book May 14th um, here in Oklahoma. It ended up falling through, and... Um, I took a short notice fight in Arkansas for my first time fighting at 205 for a title against the undefeated prospect over there. Um, went great. I got the TKO in round one, minute and 30 seconds round one. And just so happened that the head USA coach was one of the judges. And that was Joe Daddy Stevenson and uh, came up to me afterwards. And one one thing led to another. And here we are. That's awesome, man. What was it like getting to meet Joe? I always remember Joe for not only his UFC tenure, but when he was on the Ultimate Fighter, when they used to do the yeah. Scarecrow Challenge and all that. That Joe, Joe's just a legend in the sport. So that must have been cool to get to meet him and everything. Yes, sir. He's um, one of the greatest coaches I've ever had. Not only a great coach, but a great person. Um, you can tell that <clears throat> what separates from him, in my opinion, from other coaches is that he really cares. Like he'll take time to you know sit down with you and explain every little single detail there is possible whatever you're working on, you know, and um, he can really break down the mechanics to the smallest bit, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think that's great. Uh, let's go all the way back to the beginning of the man. Uh, how did you uh, initially get involved in combat sports? Where did this journey start for you? So um, <clears throat> I had a lot of buddies who did it. I wrestled a little bit in college, um, just had a little junior college in Colorado, nothing crazy. Um, found out college wasn't for me. So I ended up coming back home and uh, I thought, well, you know, I still had that itch to compete, so I thought I might as well jump in the cage and try it out. When did you know this was something you wanted to pursue? Because, you know, it's one thing to do it as a hobby or, you know, on the side, but then it's another thing to actually, you know, go in there and, and actually fight people. Yes, sir. I actually, um, to be honest, until recently, you know, I've always done it as for a hobby, as for fun. And, um, <clears throat> you know, Joe showing interest in me really kind of opened my eyes. And after we got done talking with each other, that's when I fully committed. So within this last, like, month or two you know i really bit down and have really been giving it my all on the combat sports side of things who are some of your major influences whether it's you know fighters you enjoyed watching or maybe you know a coach was there anyone that really had an impact on you we talked about joe stevenson i mean certainly a big impact i would imagine but anyone else come to mind when i say that um <clears throat> i really like dc he uh similar fighting styles you know he's a pressure fighter coming forward wrestler he really showed um how dominant his wrestling was and that kind of coming from a wrestler at wrestling background, you know, um, that's how I've won majority of my fights is ground and pound or TKOs. So seeing him do that at the highest level really kind of opened my eyes and thought that it could really be, be possible. Now, I don't imagine MMA is paying all your bills right now. Well, what do you do for work outside of fighting? Um, I work at a casino here in Oklahoma and I'm in the IT department. Oh, cool. That's good. What's what's that? That sounds actually kind of really like fun and interesting. Is, is is that the case? I don't think your bosses are watching, so you can be uh, you know transparent here. Um, so I'm I'm in charge of all cable infrastructure for all five casinos. So I pull a lot of data cable, Cat Six cable. Um, I do mostly all of the surveillance, um, hang all the cameras, terminate all the cable back into the server room, stuff like that. That's great. And plus, you know, with the fighting thing, I'm sure anyone gets out of line, you know, they're trying to screw around with the system. You're probably the guy they go to, right? Because uh, I wouldn't want to be uh, dealing with you if I was trying to do that. Yeah, you know, my, uh, my bosses are very talented at what they do. And they've really um, taught me a lot on the IT side of things. Favorite casino game? Do you have one? I personally like the video uh, blackjack. That's like my go to. Yeah, I like it. Um, You know, I like it all. I like I like I don't like losing money, but you know, that happens a little bit more than it should. Yeah. I, I just like going to the casino. It's just fun, like night out, you know, I'm, I'm a bit older. So, you know, these are the things I look forward to as a married man, but uh, it, it's, it's fun, man. Like I definitely can dig the casino and I've, you know, I've seen it, you know, the machines, there's so much to keep track of. So I'm sure that keeps you really busy and uh, probably keeps you out of trouble too, just because, you know, again, the hours are probably, uh, you know, at night, I would imagine. Yes, sir. I'm very busy. Um, a lot of the time we, uh, you know, I, I, thankfully I work seven to three, so you oh, know, cool. I have, to have the evening off. You know, I get in there and uh, get my work done, and then I get to come home to my family in the afternoons. 
That's great. Uh, let's get back to the Pan American Games here. Like I mentioned, uh, how familiar are you with some of the other opponents or do you not kind of know yet? Because I know everything's sort of coming together here pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, so you don't really know anything about anyone until you get there. They do a, a random draw. I think the top four um, in the bracket get seated one through four and then um, it goes from there. Okay, so what's that like? You know, be, fighting on the regional scene, I got to tell people this in case they don't know. Uh, you know, it's pretty much one of those things where, you know, you don't even know if you're going to fight your opponent. Sometimes there's, you know, last minute switch ups. So you're probably pretty prepared for something like this because I'm sure you've had, or maybe you have, uh, maybe you haven't, but an opponent switch up at the last minute. So, you know, the idea of not knowing your opponent right away, I, I think at this stage in your career, you're probably more focused on your skill set, anyways. Yes, sir. I don't, you know, I don't really care at all. You know, whoever it is, whoever is um, standing across from me is the one who is going to get it. You know, I don't, I don't, it doesn't, I could care less about the bracket. I'm at to the point in my career to where I'm confident enough in my skill set to um, go out there and put it on the line with anyone. If someone's never seen you fight before, is there a particular fight fighter that, you know, maybe is similar to your style or vice versa? Is there anyone that, that you think people would, you know, be reminded of if they saw you fight? Um, you know, I'm a pressure fighter. I like coming forward and I like getting to my takedown. So maybe DC, maybe Khabib, um, Joe Daddy Stevenson, you know, I like coming forward and I like opening up my shots with um, a few straight punches, you know, get them to the ground and either look to submit or look to finish with ground and pound. And just to clarify, I'm the one who asked you who people remind you of. People always get weird whenever I ask this question because they're like, oh, this guy's already comparing himself to DC. It's like, <laughs> no, I'm asking you what style you have. So I just wanted to clarify that uh, for anyone watching. Um, what about uh, training camp? Where, where are you training right now and who have been some of your main training partners? So this last month, I've taken 30 days off of work. I got blessed enough that they allowed me to do that. <clears throat> I took 30 days off and I flew out to California and I actually trained with under Joe. I trained with Joe every single day. And uh, Dominic Reyes, a uh, light heavyweight contender in UFC. Um, Jared Vandera, UFC heavyweight contender. A um, bunch of other guys that really have helped me, you know, crisp up my game in Arsenal. I know both those guys really well. Is Dom not one of the nicest guys ever? I'm sure a great mentor as well, too. Just a very uh, well-versed knowledge guy fought for the title. Yeah, he's a beast, man. He's one of the greatest fighters I've ever got to drill with before. He's a really cool guy. What's the confidence level like when you're getting a drill with guys like, you know, Jared Vandera, who's in the UFC, Dominic Reyes, who's in the UFC. Like you got to be feeling good about where your skill set's at going into a tournament like this when you're getting to work with UFC level fighters. Yeah, I for sure have um, a lot to work on, you know, by any means. I'm not perfect or close to perfect. Um, I'm just trying to get better every single day. And, you know, working with those guys, you know, you either can get better and adapt or, you know, get your butt kicked pretty quick, you know. <laughs> What about the weight cut? Like, how does that work with this sort of format? Do you just like compete at a heavier weight class or how, how does, how does it work there? Um, so I've competed at heavyweight my entire career besides one fight. And it was my last fight. That was my first time fighting at 205. That was my 205 debut. And um, right now I'm walking around about 200 and it's a single elimination tournament. So if you lose, you're done. And if you keep winning, you have to weigh in each day. You have to make 90, 93 kilogram each day. Wow. Okay. That pr pretty intense, which is great. Uh, who's going to be making the trip with you uh, down to Mexico? Um, Team USA. I think we have eight other candidates selected at each weight class, and then Coach Joe will be the head coach. Oh, cool. Okay. So none of your coaches, I, I assume, from back home then. I guess just your, I guess because it's a team, you sort of all go together, right? Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. That's cool, man. That's great. And is this, is this being broadcast anywhere uh, for those who might want to check it out and watch it? Yes, it'll be on um, IMAF. I M M A F website. Oh, gotcha. Uh, yep. Yeah, I know the site. Okay, cool. I'll have a link for that in the description. International Mixed Martial Arts Federation. Yeah, there you go. So this is a big deal. I mean, you look at the, the you know, the fighters that have competed in the I double uh, M A F, uh, you know, competition before. I mean, the list goes on of so many fighters that are alumni from that. You win this thing or you, you know, come out on top. Uh, what, what type of doors is this going to open for you? Because I know you're still early in your career, but this is a really big deal. You know, um, the end goal is to make it to a big show. Um, I'm not going to say which show. I'm not picky. You know, I'm just going to keep my nose to the grindstone and work as hard as I can. And whatever happens, happens. You know, I'm blessed to even get this opportunity. Does this kind of accelerate the process for you, though, just because this is such a high level thing? Like, you know, in terms of, you know, had you not taken this opportunity, you would still be, I'm sure, fighting on the regional scene, going pro, all those things. Like, what, um, what, like, how does this change things, sort of speak, with this opportunity? Um, well, the UFC sponsors these events, so a UFC mm. representative will be there. Um, so if I if I were to win this, you know, I think that'll help get my name out on the radar a little bit more. 
Good. That's awesome, man. Um, so short term, I imagine, you know, let's say, like I said, UFC is going to be there. They're going to monitor it. Are you kind of looking at like a contender series or just continue to fight on the regional scene? Like what would be sort of the implications of uh, you coming out on top of this thing? I'm open to whatever, whatever they, whatever they suggest and want me to do. I'm down for whatever. I'm just ready to uh, try and give my family a better life than they ever would have before. You mentioned family. Uh, do, do, how many kids do you have? I have two kids. I have a daughter named Parker and a son named Riot. Awesome. How old are they? Um, my daughter's two and a half and my son is one. Okay, cool. Yeah, I got a four-year-old and I have a eight-month-old, so I, I can relate, man. That's uh, like, how much does that has that sort of changed your your outlook on fighting? Because I know it's not just for you; it's for your family. I know the perspective's a little bit different. Yes, sir. A bunch, man. You know, when I was gone away um, this last thirty days, I just had to keep telling myself, you know, sacrifice now and for live a better life later. Um, downtime. I know you don't get much of it. You're training, you're getting ready for this, uh, big tournament coming up here. Uh, you get in any TV time, any video games, anything like that? Or what, what, what do you, what are you up to when you get that little bit of free time? You know, I just spend time with my kids and my girlfriend, Caitlin, you know, she's a great mom. She's really been holding it down for me here at home while I was away training. Um, she's really made everything possible for me. And, uh, you know, I just like taking my kids to the park or we'll go on a walk, you know, nothing crazy, just something to do with my family is what I try to you know, family time is important to me. Yeah. No, you got to put it in. Uh, probably watching a little bit of Paw Patrol, though, right on uh, Netflix. Or what, what are the <laughs> kids watching Mel these days? Coco Melon. Yeah, that's my son likes that one, too. So <laughs> I, I, I can relate to that. Uh, Gabe, it was great meeting you, man. I think we're really excited for this. The, it's the Pan American Games. Uh, we mentioned it there. I am AAF. You can check it out on their, on their website. June 21st to June 24th in Mexico. I think I got that correct. Gabe, if there's anyone you want to thank, any sponsors or any social media you want to plug, I'll give you the last word. Yes, sir. You know, I have a lot of sponsors. Um, I don't want to name them all. Uh, you put take- them on your social media, I'm sure, so yes, they'll sir. see it there. So maybe I- you plug that and then, you know. Yes, sir. I'll have a shirt coming out. Um, I'm selling a shirt and they'll have all of the sponsors on the back. Yes, sir. Good stuff. And where can they find you on social media? Um, Twitter, GRED58. Instagram, GRED58. And Facebook, just Gabe Rednose. And my fight page is Gabe the Freight Train Rednose. And I got to ask, why the 5'8"? Is any significance with that? Uh, I played football in high school, and that was what my football number was.